Um, well, I want to do something very slightly different today. How should I put this? Today, this is just a tiny bit different to how I usually do this. We haven't spoken. We haven't met. And I think the extent of our conversation is a couple of tweets and a couple of emails, one and a half of which on my part were very confused. <laughs> so, so uh, nothing up my sleeves. Right. Keith, can you confirm that um, we've never met or spoken before? Uh, we have never met or spoken, I guess, synchronously. Yeah, right? Yes. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. There's a module for that? There, of course there is. This is the Acquia Podcast. You, Keith Donaldson, are currently a UB. You're going to the Acquia U Drupal training education program that we run at Acquia. That's right. Uh, this is my ninth week at Acquia. And how's it going? It's been great. Um, before this, I, I was on a beach in the Caribbean uh, trying to figure out what I was going to do with the rest of my life. And uh, so when the opportunity to, to join Aqua as part of Aqua, you came along. Uh, I was really happy and looking forward to the experience. And uh, so, far, so far, it's been great. So, so, so w wait a minute. Aqua, you, yeah. Beach on the Caribbean. How did Beach in the Caribbean for the rest of your life not win out in, in that equation? Because my, my wife is a professor at uh, UMass Boston, and uh, she has tenure and had to come back to, you know, work. Um, All right. Whereas Fair. I could, yeah, I could work anywhere as long as I had an internet connection. But uh, she's stuck in Boston, so we had to come back. Now, my understanding is that you don't have much or any of a Drupal background. Why don't you tell us what your background is? Sure. Um, so I think by training, uh, I'm a researcher. Um, and I'm particularly interested in uh, technology and education and where they meet and um, how we can help teachers teach, you know, do a better job of teaching. Uh, not necessarily like um, iPads and, you know, all kinds of iOS devices will revolutionize teaching, but there are ways of uh, doing a better job of, of sharing information, uh, telling stories, uh, connecting people. Uh, those are the types of things I'm interested in. Uh, so, following that path, uh, I've taught in the Boston Public Schools. I've also run a number of startups. Um, and the, the last kind of major startup I ran was a company called MollySim, uh, where we were developing tangible user interfaces for molecular modeling. Um, so, there I developed three products this tangible user interface, uh, an iOS application, and a training program for students to get them prepared for uh, high school chemistry. Uh, and that was all work funded by the Department of Education. Uh, and, you know, that work is great. The funding is great. Um, but uh, when it runs out, it's kind of, it's just over. <laughs> and you have to figure out what to do next. So uh, the funding ran out for, for Molly Sim while I was there. And um, at the end of that experience, I realized I wanted to do more on the software side. Uh, developing hardware is really hard, really expensive. Um, and so I got into... The, the Django community and started doing a lot of freelance uh, Django development. Um, and during that time, I heard about Acquia U. Um, maybe a couple of pe people approached me about uh, doing some Drupal work, but I had never touched PHP, never touched Drupal. Uh, in fact, one of the last projects I worked on was originally a Drupal site. I took it over and turned it into a Django site. So, uh, Ooh. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm mostly kidding. Yeah. <laughs> hey, so you kind of um, preempted my next question. How did you hear about Acquia U? Yeah, I think it was during the the first iteration of the program, where uh, some on some mailing list or maybe at a meetup, uh, someone had mentioned it, and it looked like a, just a great opportunity 
to um, become a part of the community. Um, I wasn't really aware of every, you know, the larger uh, Drupal community. Um, you know, I heard about it a little bit here and there. Uh, VCs seem to be really interested in um, things uh, uh, Drupal related. So uh, it was definitely on the radar, but, um, you know, it was just chance, really. Uh, and so while I was on that beach in the Caribbean, I said, you know, I'm looking for what to do next. Why don't I take a look at Agui and see if they're still running this uh, program? Because um, I saw it as a great opportunity, like I said, to get in to the community. So do you have a first Drupal memory? Um, yeah, I think the, the one that probably stands out the most, uh, after my first week here at Acquia and Acquia U, I, I said, you know, I really want to test this out. You know, uh, for me, um, kind of diving into the deep end, you know, trial by fire is the best way to get, you know, a new technology or any kind of learning under my belt. Uh, so I participated in a hackathon uh, called the Fish Hackathon, uh, which is sponsored by the State Department and uh, the New England Aquarium here in Boston. Um, and for that hackathon, there was an opportunity to create a real content-driven site. Um, and uh, they were looking for a solution that would allow them to connect with folks interested in eating oysters and look for more information about oysters. Um, so I quickly hacked together something using uh, Drupal 7 and also PhoneGap uh, and an available library to connect the two uh, to create a mobile app that would uh, allow you to, you know, put in uh, your current location and find um, oyster bars uh, within a four-mile radius. Um, so it was it looked very impressive. You know, I didn't I didn't do a whole lot. I think one of the beauties of Drupal is, you know, it gets you probably 90 percent of the way there to a complete solution and then uh, uh, but as far as hackathons go, it was a great way to uh, impress non-technical judges and then uh, get a win so um, that that project is actually still uh, going on we're looking at uh, figuring out what are the real needs of the oyster farmer and how to help them do a better job of communicating you know what products uh, they offer uh, and so that'll hopefully be a, a, a Drupal 8 uh, solution. It's funny to hear uh, a technical person at Acquia talking about a, a sort of a first Drupal experience that is actually um, essentially after already joining Acquia. That's kind of yeah. a, it's, So with your experience as an entrepreneur and now this mm -hmm. hackathon app that you've put together and you've got a little bit of traction under, how do you feel about Drupal as a tool for for startups and for getting an MVP out the door? Uh, I think um, from what I've seen of the market, I mean, there are a lot of people out there with, the, with great ideas and they don't have the technical experience um, and probably lack more in confidence than they do in ability. Um, that's you know, one idea that I, I wanted to push you know, uh, is to get people to think about Drupal first. Um, uh, I think as a non-technical founder, it's a great way to, you know, um, kind of crystallize your ideas, get them in front of people and have it be something uh, that can be tested. Um, so how much functionality the, the application actually has is probably up to you and the amount of time you have. But as a non-technical uh, founder, someone with a, just an idea, I think you can get uh, a lot going, uh, enough to, you know, bring somebody on who could take it the rest of the way, um, you know, get a better sense of the direction you're trying to go in, uh, put it in front of people just to test and, you know, get their feedback. Um, so, I mean, that that's something that I should, I, I think, um, I'd like to push heavily as I, I get deeper into my own uh, Drupal uh, experience and, um, you know, develop my skills is to get those who, um, maybe don't feel like they're technically inclined uh, to give it a try. Um, you know, use something like a dev desktop uh, to get up and running, you know, quickly without having to know everything there is about the LAMP stack. Uh, using, you know, the, the UI to point and click your way um, uh, through some basic development. Uh, I mean, Drupal 
eight looks very interesting in the sense that you can do a lot just with core. Um, one of the issues I've had is just figuring out which modules to use um, and not finding a good solution that compares and contrasts them. Um, so it take, that takes some work, but you know, it, I think you, you'll be able to get a lot out of core on Drupal 8 and, and get you know, most of the way there. There's something that I call Drupal's fundamental design decision, and that is to empower the less technical user to build incredibly powerful applications. And I think it's something that sets Drupal apart from any technology of comparable purpose and complexity. Mm -hmm. And uh, this hacker and founder um, kind of startup world, I've, I've often thought there are a lot more people who want to be founders um, but who can't find their hacker. And, and I really yeah. do think that Drupal can be a tool, and um, maybe especially Drupal 8 can really, really be a tool to get people very, very close to, to well, you know, help people express their ideas, model their data, get their basic thing going. So as you can say, then they can go and find someone to help them, find some money, just show that they're actually, you know, um, you know, it allows them to show, not tell, right? Right, right. Yeah, in my experience, the uh, showing will get you a lot further. You know, I have tried to offshore development and quickly realized that uh, the folks that you offshore to, they, they might be talented developers, but they're not going to do the thinking for you, right? They're not going to tell you what your product is. And I think that's where a lot of people get tripped up. So, um, you know, whether you're going to do it in Photoshop, pencil and paper, what have you, uh, it's best to show them something, you know, to get some screenshots. Um, and uh, if nothing else, have a low fidelity prototype. But, um, you know, with Drupal, you can do more, right? Um, and, and you might have even something close to an MVP uh, if you put a little time and effort into it. So how did you feel when you were accepted into the Acquia U program? It was great. Um, you know, I, I like I said, I, I wasn't in Boston at the time, um, so I was a little worried about the interview process and how that would go at a distance. Uh, but the program is set up to accept folks, I guess, from around the country and potentially around the world and bring them to Boston uh, for this opportunity. Uh, so to be able to um, make that happen uh, from a distance was a real relief, uh, knowing that I was coming back to Boston uh, with this great opportunity uh, to advance my career. Uh, so I was looking forward to getting started. Um, you know, jumped into you know uh, the Drupal world as, as best I could. You know, uh, as an outsider trying to figure everything out, um, and uh, really looked forward to um, learning as much as I could. You know, during the fourteen weeks. So, what were your expectations going in, and um, how has the program itself lived up to those so far? Yeah. So, um, I didn't. I wasn't sure what the classroom training would be like, you know, as far as uh, D7, D8, you know, where the attention would be focused. Um, so, uh, and then I guess the other piece is trying to figure out, well, what is Acquia? Um, you know, what, what do I tell my mother, like, that, you know, uh, what I'm about to get into, you know, so that she can tell her friends. Um, uh, so those two things, um, were, were probably the most challenging to try to sort out um, and kind of set proper expectations. Um, you know, so going in, I assumed Acquia, uh, you know, was about uh, you know developing applications, um, and didn't really even realize, yeah, the, the hosting part of it. So um, I think you know the, the way. Uh, the company is moving around digital experiences and uh, providing solutions in that area uh, is really fascinating in how uh, uh, it's coming together, how it's developing. Um, and um, I was surprised to see how much is there, you know, from uh, you know, companies, uh, excuse me, uh, products that are just coming online now, like uh, Content Hub or Lyft that are just getting started. Um, it's a real ecosystem um, that I wasn't even expecting. You know? uh, it's, it's much more than just hosting or, you know, uh, just the uh, application development. So that, that was a surprise to me. Um, and then 
you know, I initially, before joining the program, looked at Drupal 8 just assuming that all the resources would be there and moving in that direction. And it is kind of going that way now, but the training uh, we d we've done so far is primarily Drupal 7. Um, so it's been, it's been you know, interesting getting a look at where things have come from, where they're at, and then also seeing where they're going uh, and how um, I and the rest of the folks in the program can be a part of that, that change. And uh, what is it that you've got your mother telling people now? Um, I say it's complicated. <laughs> <laughs> and what's a typical day like at uh, Acquia U? Yeah, so uh, while we were in training, we started at, uh, at 9. Um, initially, it was kind of your typical classroom training. Uh, there'd be a uh, some exercises, and then we would um, uh, work on our personal projects. Um, and also, we'd have somebody from the company come in to talk about uh, what, what their group does, uh, help us better understand a uh, product or service that Acquia offers. Uh, so getting a better sense of what's going on here at Acquia, plus uh, really Drupal site building uh, training. Uh, and then uh, as we progressed, uh, we started to focus more on our own personal projects. Uh, everybody kind of did something different. Uh, prior uh, cohorts have just developed personal blogs, but uh, this class kind of took it upon themselves to um, adopt, you know, or get their own project going. Uh, so f what I did was develop a, a site called Questlove. Um, that's the idea there is to um, uh, if you have an, uh, an interest um, or something that you want to learn more about uh, from a community or a group of people, uh, then this is a way to do that by uh, collecting questions from that, that group. Um, other people uh, looked at Vagrant and how uh, to use Vagrant and Puppet together. Um, another group uh, developed a, a ping pong kind of scoreboard um, that would uh, facilitate competition <laughs> here in the office uh, around the ping pong and foosball tables. Uh, so it was a very interesting mix uh, of projects uh, that were developed. And then uh, we also worked on a couple of sites uh, for the company. Uh, so some internal sites uh, that would be used uh, by folks here in Boston and probably you know, around the organization. Uh, and now we are into our first rotation, uh, first of two rotations. So we do uh, a month or two in um, two different groups uh, within the company to get a sense of a better sense of where we'd like to be and uh, to develop our skills uh, before going into interviews. And when you say interviews, what do you mean? Uh, so we, at the end of the program, um, you know, the, the idea is to develop this new talent and feed them into Acquia or a partner organization. Uh, so at the end, we interview uh, with different groups uh, for jobs. So there's no guarantee that you'll get a job uh, when you join the program. Uh, and it's, it's really up to each student to, to put in the work and the effort uh, to make sure uh, they're in a good place and prepared for the interviews, job interviews. Given Drupal's current success and level of adoption, having a good Drupal base, though, is is uh, sh surely seems to be a good way, uh, you know, a door to employment uh, these days, whether at Acquia or somewhere else. I think so. Um, I mean, it's a good first step, uh, but this is still a very tough jo job market, at least in my experience, uh, where everybody is looking for that ninja, right? Um, so um, do you have three to four years of experience and are you some sort of ninja? Um, and uh, that, that was really my, my issue with the Django Python community. It was like, you know, I never really considered myself uh, any sort of ninja, maybe like a Google ninja. I can find, you know, the answers to whatever problems I might have and, and sort them out. Um, but, you know, without, so there's a big gap between, you know, people just starting out and, and 
you know, those ninjas and how to, how do you bridge that gap? Uh, and, and so that, that was one thing, you know, that made this opportunity very attractive to me. You know, it's one way to get, you know, from start to ninja, right? Um, because this, this company recognized that there was great talent and potential out there, uh, but it needs some grooming and it needs like a runway to actually uh, travel. Um, so the, the, you know, the opportunities are there. Um, but I feel I still think it's it's a little tricky and difficult in figuring out how to navigate your way into you know some position. What are you most excited about in Drupal eight? Um, so one of the things I, I looked at early on was uh, you know what's going on in web services. Uh, some of the the projects that I had been developing um, worked a lot with. Uh, APIs from other uh, SaaS applications. Uh, so there was just a, a common thing that kept coming up and up, you know, appearing again and again is how do you, you know, take advantage of some other resource, some other application and bring it into your your own. Um, so anything, any framework that could help me do that uh, faster and more securely uh, is something I'd be interested in. And then also, Thinking of my own application, kind of uh, API first, you know, um, I think is the the way you should be doing development these days. Uh, and it looked like um, Drupal was preparing to go uh, in that direction, or ready, you know, um, to offer that, you know, if, if that's what the developer wanted. Um, the the web services RESTful first architecture is is great. I've been pitching. Uh, people in the PHP community who might not be, you know, in their nature, they might not be the biggest CMS fans, but in right. a world of um, modular componentized application development, I think Drupal 8 is in a perfect position to, um, to be the content management engine, you know, outsource the content management to Drupal 8 and then let your specialized app do what it has to do, but we've got the, we can be the content repo, we can do the uh, user authentication, we can do, you know, all the fancy uh, database queries and all the RESTful stuff too. So, yeah, I think that's, um, a, so a, API-based, RESTful, driven, what have you, I, that's, uh, I think that's, a, there's a lot of mileage in that for us as a project. So, yeah, that's cool. And the, the other piece was um, having tools that, were familiar to me. Uh, so Twig, you know, for example, for theming, um, wasn't all that different from what I've seen in Django or other frameworks. So, um, you know, having looked at D7 and you know, now D8, it's like, oh, all right, I get this, right? Uh, I know what this is from this past experience and I can bring that to bear on what I'm doing now. Um, so there's just kind of a familiar patterns and ways of getting stuff done uh, and tools. Ah, that was uh, one of the big questions that we asked ourselves as a community when we took the leap into um, moving to object-oriented coding, outsourcing the mm. theming layer to Twig, um, importing Symfony components, more external libraries. One of the pitches was always, this will help us attract new developer talent to our project. So what I think I just heard you say is that that calculation was right and, and, and here you are. Yeah, uh, I, I think it was spot on. Um, hey, so uh, Keith Donaldson, um, by my calculation, somewhere around 11 or 12 weeks into Drupal at all. Is that right? Uh, nine weeks, I think. Officially. Nine weeks into Drupal. Acquia, you student, what's your thought? favorite thing about Drupal so far? It's my favorite thing about Drupal. Um, I think, again, the ability to um, go from idea to, to MVP uh, so quickly um, is awesome and powerful. Uh, and the thing that, you know, I'm telling other people about and you know, why they should care about Drupal uh, there's an opportunity to, to get up and running, uh, to put together an application um, that would meet most of your needs uh, and provide a good stepping stone to, to go further developing something larger. 
cool. I'm glad. I'm glad we're 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 that that's real. It's you know I've I believe this is true for a long time, but I've also been involved with Drupal for a long time, so it's hard for me to have that perspective. Thanks for that. Hey, so Keith, um, congratulations again. Uh, welcome to Drupal. Congrats Thank for um, for being part of Acquia U. I hope. Uh, that all works out for you. I'm looking forward to seeing you in uh, in Boston sometime when I'm over there. That would be super, super cool. And thank you, uh, really, thanks for taking time out to talk with me today. It's been really, really interesting. Well, thank you for the opportunity to come on and talk Drupal. I, I was trying to think about what my first Drupal memory was, so I was, I was getting ready for you. <laughs> cool. All right, Keith, I, I hope I'll see you soon. Have a good one. Take care. All right. Bye now.